Wow, this has been amazing. You know, you have really pretty eyes. You know, I, I think we've really hit it off and we should do this again next week. Who is this? Who are you? Nice what do you do? Nice what do you do? No. So. What is this? I, I thought we had a connection. We went back and forth for years. I thought we finally had something. Me and you. Who is this guy? Well, this connection's a little better here, sweetheart. Whoa. So well, I think hey, you don't even know us. how deep this connection runs, all right? We've been together for so long. We've been back and forth. The internet. Right here. What's going on? Who is this guy? What's going on? Wait, can we get him out of here, please? No. We're done. We're done. I don't even want you anymore. Sorry about that. Sorry. Um, where were we? And that guy, forget about him. I'm going to treat you better than he ever did. Yeah, it was super exciting to see uh, us kind of click and, and play complimentary football. Um, I think still we have another level to get to, and which is exciting. Um, we put up that many points and played that well, and we still have another level to get to. So it's definitely exciting to, for you know, the second half of the season. Colin, Iowa had 40 points against Washington. If they have another level to get to, what's that going to look like? I couldn't even tell you. I was impressed with this weekend. If there's another level, I might pass out, Brady. <laughs> that's, right, that's right, Colin. But. Hello everyone, welcome to Before the Kickoff, the Daily Iowans weekly pregame show and your number one source for Hawkeye sports. I'm Brady Baird. And I'm Colin Crithers. We're going to break down everything you need to know before the kickoff. Today we're going to take a look at some of the news updates from last week, a look at the history between these opponents, and of course, take a look around the nation. And Brady, don't forget, we still have to recap that Washington game that, as you said, was huge for Iowa. Iowa Hawkeyes hosting the Washington Huskies on their trip back the second time in Kinnick Stadium. First one now Kinnick's debut. You see the fans trickling in there for this unique matchup. Washington trying to get on the board first, but that field goal attempt blocked by Iowa's defense, and their defense was fantastic through this one. But as we were just saying, Brady, the offense fantastic. Kamari Moulton flipping the field, getting them in scoring position, then Caleb Johnson. Rushing in for the first touchdown of the game, 7-0. Hawkeyes take an early lead in the first quarter, but Washington, one drive later, they would respond, throw to the left side of the end zone, Denzel Boston, bringing it in, 7-7. Washington tied it up. Could this be a close game? You see the one Washington fan pumping his hat. He's excited for that touchdown, but as we were saying, the defense doing their job. They're forcing a fumble in the backfield. They'd recover it, churn over. They're in scoring position. They would only get a field goal out of it, but again, one drive later. Washington making a move, wouldn't be able to do anything. Caleb Johnson open in the flats. Touchdown, his second of three on the day. That one a receiving touchdown. Cade McNamara finds his guy. Herky's loving it, and Iowa continues to do great things on offense right before the half. Caleb Johnson with minimal time on the clock, flipping the field for his team, puts Iowa in scoring position, eventually brought down, but Iowa Gets an extra field goal, going up by three more points. And as we say here in Iowa, the defense is phenomenal. You look here, a few extra sacks, a good reads all over the place, but Iowa's defense was just phenomenal. We talk about the offense doing great things, but the defense was splendid yet again. Another good read and a sack there to turn things over. The crowd here, Kinnick, getting what they're used to, but something they're not used to again. Offense finding a receiver cutting across the middle of the field. That one, Dayton Howard, we got a good look at his first career touchdown for the Hawkeyes. As Iowa with a big lead there, Washington, they'd get one more touchdown towards the end of the game. Wouldn't matter though, as Iowa, Iowa prevails 40-16. They send the West Coast team back unhappy. And Brady, as we were saying at the beginning, could you imagine an offense like this? With this game here, there's got to be a lot coming out of this game. Yeah, Colin, and that was a big-time win for the Hawkeyes. Got the offense rolling a little bit. Big win for Iowa there, but now let's send it to DITV's Tara Gillespie in the newsroom for some news updates from last week and heading into this week. Yeah, Brady, this may look like an average game for Hawkeye fans, but some personal milestones were reached on Saturday. The most obvious milestone is Kirk Ferentz hitting his 200th career win at Iowa. This per puts Ferentz as a close second for most Big Ten wins behind former Ohio State coach Woody Hayes with 205 wins. But if Coach Ferentz wins the remaining six games of the season, he will take that number one spot and make Big Ten Conference history. Think about those moments, 200 moments for all those student athletes 
um, and all of those fans that have lived those. Let, let's be clear, if, if we didn't win, I wouldn't be here right now. So that's just how it works and it, it always has. Also on Saturday, redshirt freshman Dayton Howard introduced himself to Hawkeye fans with his first college football reception against Washington. Not only did Howard catch for 33 yards, but he gave the Hawkeyes the 30 to 10 lead with his touchdown. Howard and quarterback Cade McNamara weighed in on the touchdown. I always told everybody like I didn't like had like a blackout moment on us because it means my first touchdown. But you know I'm hoping there's many more to come. I mean it's just crazy because this time you know last year he was on the scout team and here he is you know scoring touchdowns which is pretty sweet. I think overall that entire room. Um, the way that they've been practicing has been, uh, they've just been practicing so much better. Shifting from personal milestones, the Hawkeyes also had some losses this week. Iowa defensive back Devin Hilson left Iowa football to focus on his academics. Coach Ferentz thanked him for his contributions to the program. And with losses come injuries. Tight end Addison Estranga is still out against the Spartans, but joining him is offensive lineman Bo Stevens. Both injuries are in undisclosed, but both players are out until further notice. Now that I've told you all the essential Hawkeye updates, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Tara, for the updates. Colin, a couple injuries on the Hawkeyes radar this weekend. Yeah, stuff I was not really aware of, unfortunate things, but good to hear from Tara on those updates. Yes, Colin, but now it's time to send it out to DITV's resident historian, Elise Gann, with a little bit of the history on the rivalry between Iowa and Michigan State. Thanks, guys. We've got some reflecting to do today, so get your notebooks out and let's get right into it. The Hawkeyes are rolling into East Lansing this weekend with plans of raining on Michigan State's homecoming parade and giving them their fourth loss in a row. The vibes at MSU have already been low as the Spartans are on a three-game losing streak, but they did spare their fans last weekend with a bye. However, the Hawkeyes are coming in with no sympathy, looking to dominate the Spartans under the lights for the second time in a row. The last time these two teams met was early last season in a fully sold-out and blacked-out Kinnick Stadium. This battle quickly became one of the most significant games of Iowa's season, keeping everyone on their toes from the first quarter throughout the fourth. Silencing the shouts of Kinnick, quarterback Cade McNamara went down early in the first with an ACL tear, inviting backup QB Deacon Hill to fill his shoes, which would eventually last the rest of the season. Without Cade, as we all know and picked on them for, the Hawkeye offense struggled. Deacon went 11 for 27 and Michigan State led 16 to 13 after three quarters, but the defense is what kept the Hawkeyes afloat. Jay Higgins led with 12 tackles as Nick Jackson followed with 10 and a forced fumble while the D also pulled three interceptions. Although the entire defense shined, the ultimate star of the show was former DB Cooper DeGean, whose talents are now shared with the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFL. Late in the fourth quarter, as the moon was officially up, DeGene ran a punt 70 yards downfield, connecting with the end zone and giving the Hawkeyes the lead. With the field goal to top things off, Iowa pulled off the win 26-16. If we go back even further in history, we'll start in September of 1953 when the Hawkeyes and Spartans faced off for the first time ever. In Iowa's Kinnick Stadium, the Spartans ended up beating the Hawks 21-7, making a strong first impression. However, Michigan State went on to lose three times in a row the next time they faced the Hawks. Although they've matched up a total of 49 times, these two teams have only faced off outside of their home stadiums once, that one time being in the Big Ten Championship in Indiana. Michigan State ended up giving Iowa their first loss of the 2015 season, beating the number four Hawkeyes 16-13 in Lucas Oil Stadium. As for the rest of the series, Iowa and Michigan State are ping-pong opponents as their series is one of the most back and forth in the Big Ten. Iowa currently leads the series 25-22 and 2, but the last 10 games have been split between the two teams 5 and 5. The Hawkeyes have won the last three games against the Spartans and are looking to add a fourth win to their streak as well as padding their overall series lead. With a healthy Cade McNamara in their heating up offense, the Hawks will fight to keep their win streak alive. That's all I have for today, so I'll send it back to Colin and Brady in the studio. Thanks, Elise, for a little bit of a look to the past, but Colin, Enough about the past, let's look towards the future. And in Iowa's immediate future, they've got a trip up to East Lansing. Yeah, you know, as Elise was saying, it's been a pretty even series, so what can we expect out of this year's team? Yeah, Colin, this year Michigan State looks pretty different than they did last year. They've got a brand new head coach in Jonathan Smith. Now, Smith, he comes from Oregon State. He brought a couple players with him. We'll get into that a little bit more later. But at Oregon State, he had a record of 37 and 38. That's his career head coaching record. You know, I've known about his career and admired him from afar. His coaching career has been very, very impressive, and some of the people that he's worked with I have tremendous respect for. Like I said, Smith didn't come alone. 
He brought with him tight end Jack Velling and tackle Tanner Miller, but most importantly, he brought Aiden Childs from Oregon State with him. Childs is a true sophomore quarterback and a captain of the team. Start the quarterback, uh, dual threat guy, can run the ball, can throw the ball effectively, and uh, he's a very dangerous player. Yeah, to be voted captain uh, as a newcomer, that's pretty impressive. It tells you a lot about the kind of the way he carries himself. Childs is still young, but he's had some struggles this season passing the football. He's thrown for five touchdowns, but he's also thrown up eight picks, the second worst number in the Big Ten. But he does deserve some slack. Michigan State's played Ohio State and Oregon in back-to-back -back weeks. Childs is the kind of player that can hurt you with his legs as well, as he leads his team in rushing touchdowns with three. Speaking of rushing, Michigan State has a couple of running backs in new transfer K-Ron Lynch Adams and returner Nate Carter that are both 2,000-yard career rushers. They had a good running back last year that had felt like about 200 yards on us, but 100 plus yards on us, and uh, they've got another guy to go with him. They another transfer joined in there, so they've got a couple of really good running backs. They make up one of just eight duos in the country with over 2,000 career yards. Now flipping to the defense, the Spartans feature one of the better units in the Big Ten. Yeah, super physical group. Um, they're two backers, uh, two of the be better players, I believe. They, they've been there for a while. They've seen a lot of football. Got a lot of respect for them. But yeah, they're big up front. They'll move around quite a bit, uh, make it tough for you, especially on third down. You know, they'll give you some junk fronts and all these things. But really physical team. They have a great coaching staff. Um, it's, it's definitely going to be a challenge on Saturday. Michigan State is fifth in the Big Ten in tackles for loss and sixth in sacks. But even if you're able to get into scoring position against the Spartans, look out. They are third in the Big Ten in red zone defense, 13th nationally, and the talent on this defensive back seven is led by fifth-year transfer linebacker Jordan Turner, who's playing his first year in the green and white after playing for Wisconsin last season. The linebackers are very, very active. Uh, one from last year, one who transferred from Wisconsin, and then the back end, they're good as well. And there's number 43 on uh, one of their safeties. is extremely talented back there, so good group. And Iowa fans know what great linebacker play looks like, Colin. Turner is one of those great linebackers himself. He leads the Spartans in tackles, tackles for loss, and he's tied for the team lead in sacks as an off-ball linebacker. And to add a little icing to the cake, he also recorded his fourth career pick against Ohio State to help set up their only touchdown of the game. Yeah, Brady, I know a lot of people might be over overlooking this week's game, but with everything I just heard from you, I wouldn't notch this up as a win just yet. I don't think there's any easy games in the Big Ten, Colin. But, of course, this is another week where there's another Hawkeye football game, and that means there's another kid captain. Absolutely there is, and I've got the story on this week's kid captain. You know, I think that we really put life into perspective now, right? When your child has a stage four cancer diagnosis, it's definitely not great. That's what happened to Hudson Ferris when he was age nine. After experiencing pain, Hudson was sent to the University of Iowa, where he would spend the next 18 months with a stage four neuroblastoma diagnosis, and he would undergo multiple extensive treatments. Chemotherapy, five rounds of chemotherapy, surgery. We transferred to a different hospital for two back-to-back -back stem cell transplants, which started with high-dose chemotherapy. We then transferred to another hospital where we underwent 12 rounds of radiation and came back to Iowa City uh, for five rounds of immunotherapy. Hudson would miss a year of school while in the hospital and focuses in on a specific area that got him through this time. What do you remember? Like, what did you do to get through this? You can Sleep. Sleep. Yeah, he always says he, he slept through most of it, which isn't a bad thing. However, Tracy Ferris, Hudson's mom, credits his immense strength saying he never complained even once and remembers a favorite moment. The nurses knew we had never been to an Iowa game before. They had saved us the best room with the view of the stadium for the game that night. Being able to do the wave right from the other side of the, you know, at the hospital um, was a memory that we'll never forget. But now Hudson is cancer free and living his best life with his favorite experiences. Hudson is described as curious and creative. He loves the outdoors and being with his friends, but he has an exceptional love for antique tractors and is a part of a local tractor club. But most of all, as a kid captain, Hudson will get to take the field with the team during the homecoming game and see the wave from the other side. We're super happy that Hudson's healthy and can wave from the stadium versus the hospital now. Um, it just like brings us to tears. Hudson is embracing his role as a kid captain and shared that he received a signed ball from all the players at Kids Day. 
Brady, again, I know that was my story, but it was just really fun getting to meet the family and the kid. And, well, he's just a really fun person. Nothing to say about it. Yeah, Colin, great job there, man. But now it's time to go to DITV Sports Director A.J. Reister, who has a little bit of a look at the Big Ten. Ladies and gentlemen, the Big Ten continues to get stronger and stronger every week, taking down big schools and playing some phenomenal football. And this week we have more games that could shake up the rankings. Starting in Champaign, Illinois, where the Fighting Illini are 5-1 and, and ranked 22nd in the country and are hosting the 24th ranked Michigan Wolverines. We're coming off a much needed bye week. They lost to Washington two weeks ago, 27 to 17, and the offense continued to struggle. Alex Orgy was pulled early in the game for backup Jack Tuttle, who ended up throwing a crucial interception late in the game. Despite that, Tuttle was named the starting quarterback against Illinois for coming off an electric overtime victory over Purdue, 50 to 49, that came down to an overtime touchdown from Luke Altmaier and a sack on a potential game-winning two-point attempt. They'll need a little more of that magic this weekend and Altmaier to continue to be one of the better quarterbacks in the Big Ten, throwing for over 370 yards last weekend and three touchdowns. Kickoff is set for 2.30 on CBS and the Wolverines are three and a half point favorites in this one. Now over in Bloomington, the 16th ranked and undefeated Indiana Hoosiers will host the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Nebraska came in as one of the favorites in the Big Ten, but their week four loss to Illinois currently has them on the outside looking in. The Huskers are coming off a 14-7 win over Rutgers, a four sack day by the Big Red defense. They will have their hands full though with this high powered Hoosier offense that is averaging 47 and a half points per game, which ranks second in the nation. Quarterback Curtis Rourke has thrown for over 1,700 yards this season and 14 touchdowns, and this rushing attack has combined for over 1,200 yards and 23 touchdowns. This offense is no joke and has their eyes set on a potential playoff bid. Indiana is a six and a half point favorite and kickoff is set for 11 a.m. on Fox. Now outside the Big Ten, the fifth ranked Georgia Bulldogs head into Austin, Texas to battle the number one ranked Longhorns after their 34-3 stomping of the 18th ranked Oklahoma Sooners. Ewers in his return threw for nearly 200 yards and one touchdown, but it was the defense that shined in the rivalry, sacking Hawkins Jr. six times. The defense will be asked to stop a Georgia team that is coming off a 41-31 win over Mississippi State. Carson Beck struggled in the game throwing two interceptions, but also threw for over 450 yards and three touchdowns. So how much did he really struggle? We'll see if Texas can stay on top or if the former number one team in the country will take a big jump in the rankings. The game starts at 6.30 on ABC and the Longhorns are five point favorites. That's a look around the Big Ten and the nation. Fellas, what games are you most looking forward to this weekend? Thanks, AJ. Now, Colin, my answer might not make Iowa fans too happy about the game I got my eye on this weekend, but UCF is taking a trip to Ames to take on Iowa State. Iowa State ranked in the top 10 now. They've put together a pretty nice season after beating Iowa, so I'm interested to see if they can keep that role going. Brady, you say Iowa State and you say top 10, and my eye twitches just ever so slightly. But for my game I'm looking at, I agree with AJ about Indiana. If I think they win, they can sniff the college football playoff. But another game I'm looking at, I already talked about Navy. So Army hosting East Carolina, and I'm, you know, I'm just dying for an undefeated Army-Navy matchup at the end of the year. I call them both those teams ranked for the first time since just after World War II. So yeah, we'll see if that ends up happening. But Colin, now it's time for predictions, and I'll be honest, last week none of us were really all that close with the score prediction, but it doesn't really matter. You were the closest one. You beat me out by just one point, so Colin, you're the new predictions champion. Yeah, you know, Brady, I gotta say, you're looking pretty golden today. Maybe it's from the shine off this, being a little closer to you this time, but you know, you look good. Colin, listen, you're on the hot seat now, buddy. Everyone in this episode's gunning for you, so I wouldn't get too comfortable having that belt around your shoulder, but... Let's kick it off, sending that back out to Tara in the newsroom for her Hawkeye highlight and her score prediction. Yeah, Brady, you're right. All eyes may be on Colin now, but everyone loves a good Cinderella story. And not only am I somewhat of an underdog this week, but so is my player to watch, Caden Weijin. The wide receiver and punt returner started his career at Iowa Western Community College in 2021, before he walked on to Iowa's team. From not seeing any game time in 2022, Caden was just recently put on the Jet Award watch list 
which honors the ret best return specialist at the college level. And I know a lot of Hawkeye fans were upset to see Cooper DeGene head to the Philadelphia Eagles this season, but Weijin has been putting up high return yards and has been giving the offense the head start that they need. I'm feeling like we're going to see a strong return and possibly a touchdown from him on Saturday. With that potential touchdown, I'm predicting Iowa to go 33-21. Michigan State ranks below Minnesota and Washington, which are two of the matchups that the Hawkeye offense played their best in. I think the Hawks are going to use that momentum from their collaborative win against Washington, and the Spartans will have to add that fourth notch to their three-game losing streak. Now, Elise, I'll be surprised if you could follow up that prediction, but I'm going to send it on over to you. Thanks, Tara. For my Hawkeye highlight, I'm putting the spotlight on linebacker Jay Higgins. Last weekend against Washington, Higgins had a double-digit game the fourth of his career. He led the defense with 14 total tackles and five solo tackles, securing his third 10-plus tackle game of the season in the 14th of his career. The linebacker currently leads the Hawkeye defense with 62 total tackles on the season. You know, I've been going through belt withdrawals lately, and I'm getting a little desperate over here. But what really matters is that it no longer belongs to AJ. Thank you, Colin, for your service. But cherish what you have now, because I'm hoping it'll belong to me next week. For my prediction, I have the Hawkeyes blowing out their opponent for the second time in a row, this time being 38-17 against the Spartans. Michigan State has not been too solid of a team offensively or defensively all season. And with Iowa's recent offensive improvement, along with their consistent defense, I don't think this victory is even questionable. Now, I had a long day, and I'm in need of a good laugh, so I'll send it out to my good friend AJ to hear his prediction. Elise, that's real funny, but I think I'll be having the last laugh this weekend. Starting with my Hawkeye highlight, I think YA Black is going to have a big day. He had the big-time field goal block last weekend, but only had one tackle. Against a Michigan State team that likes to run the ball, but has also turned the ball over a lot, I expect Black to be wrecking havoc in the backfield. As for my prediction, in my big bounce back week, I've got the Hawkeyes winning this one 27 to 12. I will play the full 60 minutes last week, and I think that trend continues this weekend. Colin, I know you've got the belt right now. It really doesn't look that great on you, so it's all right if you just want to hand that thing right back over to me. As like I said in the little skit at the beginning, we have a very deep and loving relationship, but I'll let you try and hold on to it. First of all, Elise, you gotta thank you for your recognition and AJ. The one thing we're gonna disagree on is I think this belt looks pretty at home here on my shoulder. And I'm gonna try to keep it for a second week in a row. Now to agree with you, for my Hawkeye highlight before I earn this thing again, I'm gonna go with defensive end Ethan Herkett. Look, this quarterback from Michigan State has just absolutely struggled. You gotta take advantage of that. Ethan Herkett has been real sneaky around that D-line, but he's tied first in the Big Ten with two forced fumbles. Get him the costume tear in the backfield, again green with AJ, that could completely shut down the Spartans. Now, take into account the night game that Iowa's in East Lansing, I think this will be a really ugly Big Ten matchup where Iowa prevails 35-13. Now, Brady, like I said, I think the belt looks good on my shoulder. I know you wanted to flip to that side, but this is my good side. You know, I think this is going to look good for photos. No, listen, Colin, I'm coming for that belt. You better not get comfortable at all with that thing on your shoulder. But first, we have to start out with my Hawkeye highlight. Give me Jermari Harris this week. Childs has a bit of a turnover issue so far this season, and Jermari Harris has been one of the absolute best lockdown corners in the nation. If Childs looks his way, Harris might need to open a bakery because his turnover count is rising. Now, Colin, after your win last week, I am officially the only permanent cast member to have not won predictions yet. And quite frankly, I'm fed up. I'm upset and I need to win this week. I've talked to sources. I've hit the gym. I've been in the film room. I've ran my 40. I am ready to go this week. I'm ready to win, and I am going to have to get bold if I plan on winning this week. So give me the Hawkeyes big this weekend. Give me the Hawkeyes 40 to 13. Iowa walks into Spartan Stadium, makes themselves at home, pounds the rock all night long, and dominates the line of scrimmage and leaves once again victorious. Brady, lovely speech and all, but you hold on to the ball. And I'll keep winning the awards. All right, Colin, you watch your back, buddy, because I'm coming for you this weekend. Well, that is all we have for you today. Thank you, Tara, Elise, AJ, and Colin, and you for tuning in to Before the Kickoff. Be sure to tune in to the Daily Islands website and YouTube page for all the latest on Hawkeye sports. I'm Colin Carruthers. And I'm Brady Barron. Have a fabulous football-filled weekend, everybody.